You know, flight crews train for bird strikes and for water landings, but they hope they'll never have to use that training. Bay Area pilot and flight instructor Mac, Max Trescott is here with uh, some perspective on that. We appreciate your being with us, Mr. Trescott. That seems like an obvious place to start when you go into these trainers and you, and you practice for these unknown scenarios. Yeah. Water landings must be part of it. Boy, surprisingly, water landings are probably not the, the biggest part of it. What I can tell you is that in recent years, there's been a huge shift in pilot training. In the past, there was a lot of focus on doing the maneuvers. Now there's a lot of work with uh, scenario training where we go through different scenarios, teach people how to handle those uh, scenarios. There's also a huge focus on risk management where we help pilots to identify those areas which are either high probability or high consequence. Uh, and so in terms of the actual kinds of things that uh, Sully went through today, well, certainly uh, he has practiced many times with the shutting down one engine and returning to the airport. He's probably had practice in the past with flying an airplane with zero power, with both engines uh, simulated uh, as being shut down. I suspect he hasn't had a whole lot of practice landing on water. That's just one of those areas that's pretty hard to simulate. But frankly, it's not a whole lot different than landing on a, a runway where you try and keep the airplane under control all the way to the surface, touch down at the slowest speed while keeping the wings level. And I think it's clear he did an outstanding job today. You just talked about a scenario that was the, the real thing today. Both engines engines apparently shut down, but, a, but it does seem as gently as he brought that aircraft in that he must have had some control of that aircraft, did he? Oh, and, and that's absolutely the key, is control. Uh, you can differentiate two kinds of, of accidents that might occur. People have probably seen dramatic videos of planes that have crashed because there was something going on in the cockpit. Uh, there was a, an African uh, jet that crashed a number of years ago where hijackers were wrestling with a pilot, it hit the water and, and broke up. Here we're talking about an aircraft that landed under control. All the controls are working just fine, as you would expect after a, a bird strike. And so it was really just a matter of steering for the river and putting it down as gently as possible. Max, how common are those bird strikes here in the Bay Area, though? Well, it's, it's pretty shocking, but bird strikes are incredibly common. The FAA estimates that more than 7,100 bird strikes occur every year. The, uh, the good thing is the vast majority of them result in uh, no damage at all. Now, I had a bird strike myself just a couple of years ago flying here in the Bay Area, and there was zero damage damage. But I have to tell you that pilots are constantly vigilant, uh, particularly when they're below about 3,000 feet. So on takeoff and landing, uh, all pilots spend a lot of time looking out the window and avoiding birds. In fact, the one tip that I would pass along to pilots is if you're near a bird, uh, if at all possible, fly over the bird rather than under it, because scared birds tend to dive. So you really don't want to fly under a bird. Oh, that's good information. All right. Max Trescott, we appreciate your time, uh, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. All right.